Well, welcome to Coffee with Job on Tuesday morning. Uh, it's, been, it's been a good morning so far. Uh, Scotland have just been in Denmark. I've been reading uh, Gregory of Nyssa talking about the human body and a wonderful sermon on Isaiah 53 from Thomas Manton, again reminding us just of the importance of the cross and then, you know, a psalm a day. That helps you with absolutely everything. But we're looking at Job, and we're in Job chapter 20 and at verse 10. And we're going to consider especially the issue of poverty. His children must make amends to the poor. His own hands must give back his wealth. The youthful vigor that fills his bones will lie with him in the dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth and he hides it under his tongue, though he cannot bear to let it go and let it linger in his mouth, yet his food will turn sour in his stomach. It will become the venom of serpents within him. He will spit out the riches he swallowed. God will make his stomach vomit them up. He will suck the poison of serpents. The fangs of an adder will kill him. This is just, this is, this is uh, great comfort, isn't it? Well, What's being said here is that Job was a wealthy man and he enjoyed good food. And yeah, he said, this is gonna be like poison to you because you didn't help the poor. What he toiled for, he must give back uneaten. He will not enjoy the profit from his trading for, for he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses he did not build. Surely he will have no respite from his craving. He cannot save himself by his treasure. Nothing is left for him to devour. His prosperity will not endure. In the midst of his, dis of his plenty, distress will overtake him. The full force of misery will come upon him. When he has filled his belly, God will vent his burning anger against him and rain down his blows on him. Do you know what? There's like, like so much of this stuff in Job. There's stuff here that's true, and then there's stuff here that's wrong. The true part here is the concern for the poor. The stuff that's wrong is the same problem that we've got all the time, that it's assumed that because Job is suffering, Job is suffering, he must have done something wrong. And here, so far decides it, he must have oppressed the poor. Um, the Bible has a lot to say about that. I've noticed something very interesting. Uh, in fact, I just wrote something about this, which will be published soon. That a lot of wealthy people in churches talk about the poor. And they say, we're, we're going to help the poor, and we're going to do this. But I contrasted a service in Glasgow Cathedral, an ecumenical service done for COP26, where <laughs> All the dignitaries and the, the leaders in their robes and everything paraded to the front, sat in their appointed seats of honor. And then the, the speaker spoke about the poor and about Jesus inviting the poor to the table. And I thought, yeah, if you had a beggar off the streets of Glasgow, you wouldn't be invited into the cathedral and, and up to the seat of honor. And I just thought it was so hypocritical. And then I contrast that with what I saw with my son in Charleston Community Church in this very poor housing estate. And instead of talking about the poor, he was talking to the poor and living with the poor. And I think that's a fundamental difference. And I do think we've missed something in the church here. I think when we spiritualize everything and say, well, poor means poor in spirit. No, it doesn't. You don't, we're not disembodied in that sense at all. So I think that any biblical church will be a church that is concerned for the poor. Now, he has oppressed the poor and left them destitute. He has seized houses he did not build. I'm living in a situation where there are rich people going around buying up houses and selling them on at massive profits. And there are poor people who can't afford to get housing or even you know, moderate people who can't afford to get housing. And I just, so much of that, it seems to me, is wrong. So I think the lesson I want to take from today is that as a church, 
And as Christians, we mustn't just talk about the poor. I'm doing this just now. But we must pray, we must live. And I think especially our focus on, on, on ministry and outreach must be in those areas. So God bless Charleston, God, God bless those churches, people doing church planting here in the west of Sydney. And may it be that we're like Paul and, or like Peter rather, and the apostles who told Paul, Galatians 2, they said to him, as long as you continue to remember the poor, the gospel is good news for the poor. God bless you and see you tomorrow.